Mobile data use is rapidly increasing and to cope with this increasing demand and the load it puts on the network, the mobile network operators are having to roll out additional capacity and a big area of this increased capacity comes in the form of increased radio spectrum, particularly in the case of E and Vodafone by using the 2600 megahertz band alongside their main 4G sort of bands of 1800 megahertz in EE's case and 800 megahertz in Vodafone's case. So the reason the 2600 megahertz band adds so much in terms of capacity is because both operators have an absolute shed load of it. However, primarily both operators are currently using a single carrier of 20 MHz in the 2600 MHz band. O2 is also refarmed their 1800 MHz band for 4G in some areas to provide a little bit of extra capacity, though they only have 5.8 MHz of the 1800 band, so you won't generally see it unless you've got a Cat6 device because the 800 MHz carrier O2's got 10 MHz of, so it has more capacity than the 1800s. The 1800s only used to add a little bit rather than being, say, a primary carrier like, say, 2600 would be on E and Vodafone. So let's take a look at some mast pictures. So EE 2600 masts are very easy to notice because for a start, if you haven't noticed 2600 on your phone, the cable tags on the antennas are orange for 2600. So if you see an orange cable tag, it's very likely to be E2600. However, they have the 2600, of course, alongside all their other bands in their sort of portfolio. So in all these masks that I'm gonna show are carrying obviously more than just 2600. So this is the main mast that I show on some of my E2600 webpage. And the simple reason for that is it carries basically everything. So it's got 800 megahertz, inputs on it which are the green cable tags it's got 1800 which is the red cable tags 2100 which is the blue cable tags and also 2600 which is the orange cable tags so it carries every band on ee's broadcast spectrum it also carries 3 3g and 3 4g so it actually carries all of their bands as well although i'm not completely sure whether for example it's live for 3 4g 800 but it's certainly cabled in a way that 3 could stick 4G800 live on that site. So it's quite an impressive one. This panel uses a, this setup uses a Comscope Andrew triple band panel with two high bands and a low band for the carrying the 800, 1800 and 2100 and then a Huawei triple band with only one of the inputs cabled for carrying the 2600 megahertz. So this is another site which carries everything so in this case there's a Comscope dual band panel for the 800 megahertz and also 1800 and then it has a Huawei triple high band panel for carrying the 2100, 2600 megahertz bands of which two of the feeds are cabled. However this mask does not carry any three stuff as far as I'm aware with three using a separate monopole for their 3G services fairly near this rooftop site. And this is another setup using a dual band Comscope panel and a triple band Huawei panel using very much the same configuration as one of the setups that we saw earlier except in this case the panels are rather close together rather than sort of nicely separated but fundamentally the configuration remains very much the same. So next up is a mask that doesn't have any 800 megahertz cabled so it's just 2600 and then the sort of usual bands so in this case we have a single high band antenna and also a triple band Huawei so the triple band Huawei has clearly got an orange tag on it for 2600 on those cables and it's also just got the usual array so this will just be carrying 1800, 2100 and 2600 I think it also carries 3 3G at the moment with potentially 3 4G 1800 in the future now also on this site and on some others, the 2600 megahertz remote radios are also visible, as you can see mounted at the railings here. And this mast near a dock has very much the same configuration as the building one, 
using a triple band Huawei and a single band high band panel. Once again, the orange tags are visible on this setup. In one case, I've seen they have stuck frequencies onto a triple band Huawei panel, as you see in this case, and also RIUs are visible too. So this mask carries 2600 for EE and then the usual 18, 2100 for EE and 3, and it did also carry 3s, 4G, 1800. One thing to speak about is the triple band Huawei panels, especially specifically the triple high band Huawei panels. So these have have a high narrow band input and then two high wide band inputs. So these use the fairly standard colour scheme. So the high narrow band feed or the high narrow band ports have blue surrounds on them and the high wide band ports have yellow surrounds. So in some of these setups you've seen that the blue input is sort of connected on all of them but then for the yellow feed sometimes they use the middle inputs and sometimes they use the side inputs it doesn't really matter which both have got a suitable frequency range for connecting up the 2600 megahertz so now up to see a vodafone 2600 megahertz 4g mask now these are significantly less common than ee's ones so it was only really just by chance that i came across this mask while driving on the motorway and i noticed that my phone was reporting it was connected to the 2600 band and due to the range of 2600 being relatively small it wasn't too hard to find. This master is quite tall and on the lower stack there is the old Legacy O2 stuff but it's the panels on top that are the ones carrying the Vodafone 2600 and the modern cornerstone stuff. So I believe these panels are Comscope CVVP X304 R3s which each have one low band input and two high ultra wide bands. So between the two panels we've got two low band feeds and four ultra high ultra wide band ones, which is perhaps the only indication that you'd get from the ground that this is actually carrying 2600 because Vodafone Note 2 don't colour the tags according to the frequencies, the frequencies are written onto the tags and unfortunately the lettering is quite small so unless you've got a really long lens and good weather it's actually very hard to work out, it's very hard to actually read the tags and therefore it's quite hard to work out what the actual schematic for this mast is but I think purely based on the number of high band feeds it has to be carrying something other than the standard high band because Usually the only high band that Vodafone O2 would fit is 2100 megahertz for 3G because their 900 megahertz 2G, 3G and 800 megahertz 4G are all low band frequencies. In some sites there is also 1800 megahertz which I think is actually fitted on this site as well based on the quite high demand location and certainly O2 before had 1800 megahertz. In fact they still do have 1800 megahertz panels cabled on their stack below. So the mast is therefore carrying 2100 MHz, 2600 MHz and 1800 MHz high band frequencies and that explains why it needs so many high band inputs on each sector. However I'm not completely sure what the schematic for this mast is because with so many inputs on the antenna, you know, so many ports, it's quite hard to work out but there are very many different type there are very many different ways they could wire it carrying all those frequencies. So there are, I have put a schematic on the website, but I'm not completely sure of it and because I'm not sure of it I'm not going to stick it in the video. I am planning, I'm trying to find out where some other Vodafone 2600 MHz masks are so I can try and pay a visit and see if they follow the same pattern or whether they use completely different panels and completely different cabling. But outside of major cities they are actually quite rare. However, Vodafone No. 2, due to both of them possessing 5.8 MHz of 1800, also deploy that on some sites and I actually see it cabled on quite a few masts as well. Now all of these seem to use the same configuration with a Catherine triple band antenna with two low inputs and a high and alongside that single high band Catherine as well. So inside into the low into the triple band Catherine panel, in one input goes the 800 megahertz 4G, in the other input goes the 900 megahertz 2G 3G, and in the th 
third, the high band, goes to the 1800 megahertz, and then on the single high band Catherine panel goes the 2100 megahertz 3G. And this seems to be the setup across a whole number of sites that are visited. So in terms of performance, because Vodafone and EE have 20 megahertz currently generally deployed on the 2600 megahertz band on these masks, the maximum speed that you can get is about 150 megabits per second. And I have seen in the sort of 110 region on Vodafone masks carrying 2600 and around about the 90 megabit per second mark on an EE mask carrying 2600. And that's just with a Cat4 device. So I'm only using the 2600 megahertz band. However, I stuck the device on the other 4G frequency available, so 1800 megahertz in the case of EE and 800 megahertz in the case of Vodafone. And at both these 2600 sites, those two perform very well. So at the Vodafone 2600 mast I've just shown, the 2600 was yeah doing 110 meg per second, but the 800 megahertz was doing about 60. So if I had a Cat6 device using both of those carriers, the 800 and 2600 carriers, I would have got 170 megabits per second, which on a phone is pretty incredible. At the e at one of the e e 2600 megahertz sites, the 2600 carrier was doing about 90 megabits per second, and the 1800 carrier was doing about 60 or 70, I think. So again, with them, I would have got 160 megabit per second had I had a Cat6 device. E's also got a cap on some sims, so I probably wouldn't have seen the 150 or so, but it would have certainly been possible. In terms of O2's highest performance, the 800 megahertz carrier is, once again, typically I see about 60 megabits per second, and on the 1800 megahertz, around about 30 as possible. So if you combine them together, the highest speed I've seen is about 100 megabits per second on O2 4G+. Meanwhile, 3 cannot really do carrier aggregation or 4G+, due to their 800 megahertz band only having 5 megahertz bandwidth, and also being used for Vaulty, and their 1800 megahertz band having 15 megahertz and not being used for Vaulty at the moment, and they're very different coverage footprints resulting from the way they've set the power up just make it not really suitable for 4G plus at this point in time although with a total of 20 megahertz between the two bands should they aggregate them you could be looking at a maximum of around about 150 megabits per second if 3 and 02's deal does go ahead and they do end up with a different spectrum holding this might change however and Vodafone EE actually have so much 2600 that they can do more than just a 20 megahertz carrier. So EE has done sort of dual carrier 2600 before, and that means that they could do triple carrier with 2600, 2600, 1800, which is what they did at, Wim at Wembley Stadium to provide a speed of 450 megabits per second, which for a mobile is just absolutely insane. Vodafone, meanwhile, they have uh, enough 2600 to, I think, have another downlink carrier. So they could potentially do 2600, 2600, 800, or even potentially use the 1800. But due to the limited spectrum holding the 1800 band, that's more of a, I wouldn't like to say last ditch, but it's not the kind of optimum band to use, really, because of its limited capacity. So I mean, with a 5.8 megahertz carrier, the maximum speed you're looking at is about 37, 35 megabits per second. So it's very, the 1800, say in O2's case, is very much there to supplement rather than be the primary data carrier, which is how they're using it. So I hope you've enjoyed this slightly technical look at some of the higher capacity masks that are available and are in use. Um, and I'll see you on the next video.